Hey, business building warrior, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I've got a treat for you today, another guest episode where we bring on some students of the Proven Amazon course. We're picking up some momentum, building a beautiful business. They're going to share all the details with us here in just a moment. It's a homeschooling family that used to have four kids, and they got five, a new baby in the mix. And he got some rough news here just a few months ago as we're recording this. Uh, it's February of 2023. So back in October of last year, he, he was laid off from his job. And even though they'd been experimenting and considering building a business on Amazon, and they'd tried some other entrepreneurial stuff, including trying to launch a business with some private label strategies that they'd seen, nothing was really working. Nothing was catching their interest, or it was just flat, more expensive or more time consuming or less more risky than they realized when they got into it. Nothing was clicking until they started playing around with the replens model that we teach in the Proven Amazon course. They're beginning to see some momentum and success. Again, they give us all the details of this beautiful family. It's a homeschool family. They love spending time together. They love being together, working on the business together. The kids are in the business with them. The family dynamic is beautiful. You're going to really enjoy hanging out with these guys today. A couple things from my notes. They do plan to join us at The Proven Conference, I asked toward the end of the interview, but I'd love to point that out right now. Theprovenconference.com. Get over there. By the time this episode launches, we have either announced the city or will announce the city very, very soon. But either way, we'll have all the details, all the updates at theprovenconference.com. Hundreds of listeners to this podcast will be there. You want to come join us and hang out with us in at the event, I almost said the city. I can't say it yet because I'm not sure if we've announced, but we do know it's July 6th through 8th and it's a Midwest location within driving distance for a, a large number of our community. We kind of mapped it all out. We've we, we've taken a look at um, where the most people live for the in the United States who listen to this program. So we found the Midwest to be a pretty decent location where most people can drive in and they don't have to fly. So hopefully you can join us. Uh, other than that, we've got a couple other things I wanted to go over before I open up this, uh, open up the line to the interview. Talking about the other business models, we spend a lot of time. I've never really talked to someone at length before about building multi-level marketing businesses and, and why I'm not a big fan of that model. I know some people do great with it. I'm not here to say they are all terrible or anything like that, but I certainly don't do it myself anymore. I used to. It's been over 20 years ago. I'm approached constantly by people who are interested in having me, recruiting me to do those models. But I talk a little bit with our guests today about their experiences with those models and contrasting multi-level marketing with the feel that you get from building a business on Amazon and replens, as well as we spend some significant time talking about the other business opportunities that open up to you as you have success building a business around the Amazon models that we teach, all the multiple income streams that can develop. So a, a good fun time talking about how they find inventory, how their business is doing, sharing their numbers, as well as contrasting what they're doing now to some of the things they've done in the past. They have a very bright outlook for the future. A lovely couple. Let's jo jump over and meet the Lucas family. You're going to love these guys. So, hey, guys, welcome to the show. Thanks hey, for Jim. having us. Great to yeah. have you guys here. Looking forward to hearing your story. Uh, let's start with you, Brett. Tell us more about uh, why you guys got into e-commerce. Uh, well, it's... It's a, a lifelong kind of journey. Um, yeah, we've always kind of wanted to have the, the stay-at-home family, uh, work-from-home dynamic. Um, we like hanging out with each other. So that's, that's something <laughs> that's that we like. That's a bonus as a married couple, right? Yeah. Uh, we've been married for 15 years. Um, and it's kind of been one of those things from the get-go that we've wanted to, to do something that is... Um, less traditional, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, not a nine to five, but something that we can do together from home or from wherever we want. Um, so we've done all sorts of things. I'll let Leah get into that later. Um, she's gone through a lot of at-home businesses. Um, I've gone into all the things. Uh, when you start searching YouTube, you get uh, all the opportunities that are there that are going to make you a million bucks, but none of them ever do. Um, right. But So we've done... Everything from you know selling T-shirts on Shopify to 
uh, trying to go down the private label route on Amazon. Really? Um, yeah, started diving into that, and it was a lot more work than uh, than we were yeah. than we bargained for. But the sales um, page didn't give you all the details, right? <laughs> no, we yeah. didn't. Um, We've heard so, that story many times. Yeah, and it's sad because it was, you know, I I I knew about Alibaba a long time ago, and so I would buy you know, sunglasses and pocket knives and things <laughs> that I could find a, a name brand pair of sunglasses for $3. And so I'd buy a few of those. And, um, and then, and then I came across the the private label FBA gold mine, right. That, um, and I was already familiar with Alibaba that I knew that I could find these things from, and I could get them shipped over from China and right. I can, I can make a million dollars. And <laughs> that was the um, plan. Yeah. And so it, it it was something that it, that it made sense to me, and so I started diving into that, and um, and actually uh, started went into a partnership with a friend, um, and we bought a course, paid about a thousand dollars for it, and which is the low end. <laughs> a lot of those are, you know, as yeah, you know, that's what I was I was thinking. Yeah. That's like the lowest price private label yeah. training. They run upwards of ten, fifteen thousand in some cases, but the results yeah. are the same. Regardless, ninety-five yeah, really percent of the time, it just doesn't yeah. work out. Yeah. Yep. And so, um, but it it got it it got my my wheels turning that mm -hmm. that there is opportunity there. You know, what's it going to be? What are, you know? There's something out there. Um, yeah. He. I remember him saying during that time, "There's got to be a way. There's got to be something. It's not this, but there. I know there's a way, but we just didn't know what it was." Yeah. Yes. Um. So, so 2020 COVID hit and I, my job, um, I worked in a, in a little wood shop, um, and make little, um, like high end golf putters actually, um, really? out of that's wood. fascinating. So it was, it was a little niche thing that, um, but then I did that. I love woodworking. And so it was, a, a really cool job. Um, and but we shut down during COVID for a couple months. And so I was home for almost three months at home 24 seven with my wife and four kids at the time. Um, that, and, and it was the best time. I had so much fun. We, we did a bunch of stuff around the house. We'd go out, we'd go down to the river, we'd go, go on adventures. But I'd wake up in the morning and we'd have breakfast together. We'd do homeschool all together. Um, and then we'd have the whole day to just do whatever we wanted to do. And I loved it. And it was so sad to me hearing a lot of people saying that they're, you know, I can't wait for my husband to go back to work and get out of the house. That and we didn't feel that way. <laughs> right. We, we loved being home and we loved being together and yeah. we weren't each other's throats. It was, yeah. it was amazing. We've, um, we have always been that way. You know, I'm, I'm 20 years into that reality. There's actually a meme that went around and it was like this, this little guy, this guy looking sideways going that moment when you realize that what everyone else calls quarantine is just your normal daily routine. <laughs> 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 That's kind of how it was for us. It's like, oh yeah, everyone's going crazy with new routines out there in the real world. Nothing really changed for us. We're yeah. home, we're together, we homeschool, we, we have great friends, lots of sports and activities for the kids incredibly active social life for all of them. Cause that's one of the things people are always concerned about with homeschoolers uh, mm -hmm. building our business. They're integrated into it. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're seeing the results of it. This isn't theory for us anymore. This is 20 years of reality. Dad is home. Mom is the teacher. Everybody pitches in on the business, eating most meals together as a family uh, with a different pace. We kind of rejected the, you know, that cookie cutter, approach that everyone's supposed to take and yeah. we definitely could have gone and and you know i had a corporate job as well and I'm, this isn't about my story today but when i contrast the two it's night and day and i love that you i just see the excitement you know you got a little taste of what it's like to to be here to be home to love being around each other as a family and the benefits of that so i'm, I'm loving this story so far man yeah so that yeah like exactly what you said it was it was the taste of the good life, right? That, um, that's, that's, we, we knew that we always wanted it and how it was, you know, but we didn't know how it was going to work. Um, but so then 
uh, I went back to work and, you know, it, it was a good job and started, um, you know, just getting back into normal life, right? Kind of, did, we didn't lose the dream, but we lost the drive. Um, and then we have some friends that have been in e-commerce for a very long time. Um, they did a lot of eBay stuff um, and then came across the, 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 you know, the podcast, the Facebook group um, and had this opportunity and, and they, they called us up and said, Hey, I think you guys would really like this. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's this podcast. I'll send it to you. There's a free Facebook group. You can get all your questions answered. It's buying and selling stuff. That's just, you can go to Walmart. We're, we're going to Walmart every day. You should see my living room right now. It's full of Walmart stuff. He sent us a picture of grocery bags full, like his kitchen full of bags. That's yeah. great. That's <laughs> so great. So it was, it was word of mouth friends who were, who were doing the model already themselves and, and just kind of introduced it to you guys. Yes. yes. And, and thought of us and said, you guys could really do this. Um, and so they, you know, they had a lot of e-commerce experience, but they were fairly new to the replans model and selling on Amazon in that, in that, like the, the arbitrage kind of realm. Um, so anyways, it was, that was in 2021 and we got the podcast and, uh, we listen, I mean, really we listen religiously. It's, uh, we go on walks almost every day and we, we have, we're pushing our baby in the stroller with a little speaker on it and listen to the <laughs> podcast and just start talking and dreaming. And, um, and so we've been doing that for a year and said, Oh, we, we should get going. but we were in a good spot. I, I had a good job. I had, you know, the, the good hours, it was flexible. Well, and then we had just had a baby. And then we had a baby in 2022. Um, yeah, 2021 was baby, had him in 22. And so, um, and, and Leah can get into some of her story in a minute, but she was working another business there. Um, and we didn't really have the, the need to branch out. We were in a comfortable place and yeah. it, it didn't make sense for us to take a big risk at the time because why did we need to? And we didn't also have, we felt like we didn't have the time to give either. Like something else would have had to give at, at the time and we just didn't have that capacity. Yeah. yeah. Life, life has its seasons. You know, you've got to carve out some margin and you guys have done enough businesses. You've re- probably learned maybe the hard way as most of us do that launching something new means there's going to be a season of almost feels like a little chaos. You don't know if you're doing it right. What else do we need to learn? How, how big is the learning curve here? We thought we knew, but are we even asking the right questions? You know, that season of confusion comes with every new venture in business. And so you guys are like, hey, well, this, this may not be the season. New baby, we're, we're pretty steady. But, but I love that it reminds me a lot of hearing you, the way you describe that season of when someone has a good job that they like, that's kind of a good time to be looking around at what else is out there just to know in case, right? So you guys were kind of doing this background in the back of your mind, subconscious, almost letting it work on. Is this something we want to do? That's a healthy place to be. And I know, and the reason I say that is because I know I've heard from a lot of people who did the same thing. They listened to a good 20, 30, 50, 200 podcast episodes and spent time in the Facebook group for a year before they finally said, okay, Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna take a shot at this. I I think, I, I, I think we can do this. So I love that. That's great. I'm all about taking your time and learning and and waiting for that right season to present itself. Yeah. So yeah, I, that was it, it was a lot of learning, but it's also I I get really um the analysis paralysis kicks in pretty strong for me. And so I wanted to go through the course we you know, we got the course and we wanted to go through it and I wanted to go through all the modules and do all the things and you know, but we're doing it after our kids go to bed and we're doing, you know, so we'd, we'd lay in bed and we'd, we'd throw it up on the TV so we could watch it and Until we fall asleep. And then we'd fall asleep <laughs> and so then we'd have to go back and watch another one. And, um, anyway, all that to say, so, so then in October of this last year, 2022, I was laid off from my job and wow. Was that been, unexpected or was the writing kind of on the wall? Was, um, I, yeah, it was, it was unexpected. Um, it, you know, and it was just, it, there wasn't enough, you know, recession, I don't know. Um, but there wasn't enough work for me there. So, um, I was laid off and it was really, a, honestly, it was a really freeing feeling 
Um, Cause we've been talking about this for so long that, you know, what's going to, what do we need to do to get our Amazon business going? Let's, we got to do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. Uh, but we'd never had the, the sense of urgency that we really needed to kick us into gear. Um, so that was it. And said, okay, we're going, we're going whole hog into this thing and we're going to make it happen. Um, so I, I, you know, picked up some, some side jobs and things that I could do. Um, I, I'm right now working for a friend that's a, has a, a construction company. So I'm working with them. And so I have money coming in that we've been able to float the, the last couple months of the business. So um, that's a huge blessing. And, and I'm, it's totally, you know, it's a God thing for sure. Um, right when we feel like we're about to, to lose it, then something comes along. And God just provides and has blessed our family immensely. You know, I'm very blessed to 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 get the jobs that I've had. Um, and it's just it's people that I've, you know, we we live in a, a small town and have lived here. I was born and raised here, so I know a lot of people. And so it just takes a few phone calls, and I can find work, which has been amazing. That's awesome. Um, where and where do you guys live? We live in Grants Pass, Southern Oregon. Okay. So down, down in a little river town, bottom corner of the state, <laughs> bottom, bottom corner of Oregon. Gotcha. So yeah, we love it here and just have a, a great community here that, um, yeah, it's, we're incredibly blessed, but, um, so our, our Amazon business, we, we then it was time to go. And so we had to start going and we had signed up, uh, and started an Amazon account previously. and. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as a, as a newbie that maybe is trying to get into it, don't let your account account go, um, deactivated because if you set um, it up and don't do anything, they deactivate. You just let it sit. Yeah. So was that a struggle getting it restarted again? (laughs) Yeah, we had to, you know, we had to set up an appointment and because we were ready to go. And so we went, you know, we ran down to Walmart and bought the stuff that we could, we found a few things that we could sell and we were so ready and so excited. And then we get back and go to open up our account and we had to get verified. And so we had to wait two weeks. Wait, yeah, it was almost two weeks to set up an appointment. And then we had to do a video call and they had to look at your ID. Yeah. All the things. It felt very nerve wracking. We didn't, they wanted you to have all these documents. It really was not as big of a deal as we made it up to be right. in our head. Yeah. Um, but those little things that when you're new, they do feel like these huge mountains, you know, yeah. to over. It, that's <laughs> exact <laughs> imagery I use. The, these these little molehills in the rearview mirror feel like mountains when they're in your oh. windshield coming at you, right? And just getting set up. Yeah, Amazon takes that process very seriously of verifying the identity of new sellers now, and that's how they weed out a lot of the bad actors. Is make sure they're dealing with real people, not setting up fake spam accounts and that sort of thing. Um, yes, yeah, so you guys got through that process, and and uh, mm-hmm. then then you started picking up some momentum from there. It sounds like, yeah. So that uh, we we got all that figured out, um, and and we started collecting things, and um, it was the towards the end of November that we sent in our first shipment, which was a whole fiasco for us. <laughs> our first time, um, we. If anybody is out there listening that um, doesn't know that you can print an entire batch of FN SKUs on a 30 up sheet, uh, print the whole batch at once because we printed one at a time and would literally (laughs) pull the stickers off and replace them in the corner and run it through the printer again. Um, So you can do a whole batch, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. We only had a couple shipments with us and we finally were able to purchase a thermal printer. Right. Um, after we sent it in, I mean, we spent so many hours on that first shipment. And then at the bottom of the page, he said, it says you can print them all at once. And I was like, oh, I knew there had to be a better way. <laughs> oh, that's so great. I mean, but those are the kind of things that happen when you're starting up a new, you know, and, and it, it's funny. It's in the rearview mirror now. It's a mountain that became a molehill. But you guys plowed through it. And, and these kind of things happen to everyone. Absolutely all of us go through these things. Anything worth doing, anything worth building or having, it's going to require blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice. And you guys have you guys have been through a lot of those initial stages. And you're doing it together with smiles on your faces. Well done. <laughs> well, smile's not always there. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> later on, it might be. But <laughs> at the time. Yeah, that's, that was something that you just, it just reminded me. We were putting together 
like our second or third shipment, uh, which, yeah, so we had the first shipment in November. Sent it in the last. And sent it in towards the end of November. And then you have to wait and wait and it get they, they received it and we were excited and we're going to make some sales. And then they put it into transfer and it goes to other warehouses. And so we were waiting and um, we have our, we have our 13 year old son, he was sourcing and we, we'd pull a, a Keepa list. We went through the Keepa training. Um, and so he would, he, he was doing sourcing for us and he came across some Christmas items and it's beginning of December. And we said, well, we sent this in almost, you know, it's been at least two weeks and nothing is hit yet. We can't send it into Amazon. So let's just throw it up FPM. Why not? And so we found holiday items that we sold a lot of in, in a couple of weeks. And it, you know, on a on a handful of things that we found at a store that w- they were selling like hotcakes. That's and so awesome. We, that I love fun. it. Do you mind if we take a pause right here so I can keep any, everyone up to speed who might be hearing and not understand what it is you just said? When you yeah. send in, especially you feel it when you send in your first shipment, especially if you're getting started around Q4, the last three months of the year when everything kind of slows down at Amazon, it takes mm-hmm. Amazon time to receive your box of product, open it up, verify what it is, count it, decide what warehouse they want to stick it in, which means maybe shipping it somewhere else. It can take, you know, the longest I've ever heard of is six weeks for your product that you've sent in to actually be up for sale in front of customers if you go the FBA route. And you guys were doing that, you know, November, fairly busy shopping season, Amazon's a little understaffed. It takes two, three weeks at times, maybe even more. But if you want to ship this stuff yourself directly to a customer, Merchant Fulfill or FBM, we call it, as opposed to FBA, FBM, Fulfillment by Merchant, you can put it up for sale. We hear stories of people standing in the checkout line at a store buying hot products. And before they've even paid for them in their shopping cart, they're selling to customers on Amazon. So they get them home and ship them out that day. Just like if you were selling it on eBay. You're the one that does the shipping. So you guys found some hot Christmas items. And yeah, had you sent those in early December, they wouldn't even have been available for sale for two or three weeks. And I mean, we're at Christmas now. It's too late. But you merchant fulfilled those. And I, I love hearing the the creativity of, of what you guys pulled off there. Uh, and so you, you got some decent results mm-hmm. pretty fast. I mean, you guys, you, you got laid off in October. You guys got serious about it towards the end of October. Here we are, November is kind of the learning curve month and you start to send some stuff in. You're starting to see some results. How did it go for you? Uh, you know, let's put some dollar figures behind some of that if you don't mind. Yeah, so that the first month of uh, selling, or our first sale in December was December 6th. Um, and then it was around the 12th that um, we found those the Christmas stuff and said, let's do FBM. And then we were looking for anything FBM that we could because we knew that we could sell it right away. And yeah, we were seeing it. And it was awesome. Um, so we we finished out the month at just about $3,000. And oh, that's probably, a great first month. And this is only yeah. two months ago, you know, as we're yes. recording this, we're in early February. Uh, so, you know, a couple months ago, your your first month was quite a success. Do you have a number or know what your net margins were on that 3000 in sales? Yeah. So we, I, we knew you would ask, <laughs> but we just started using seller board. So we're still learning, but we did get December dialed in. Yeah. Um, so on that, we, with those FBM stuff that we found was really high and we know that it's not going to always be this, but we were at a 20%, 27% margin and an 88% ROI. That's awesome. And so we were stoked. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. You guys put almost a thousand bucks in the bank near it in your first month of playing with this business. And I want to hear, I want to hear from uh, you, Leah, just contrast you. You've done a lot of businesses now. You guys had mentioned that. And, and, and and we heard a few minutes ago, we're going to kind of go through that list and I'd love to do that. I want to hear, maybe if we have to back up and then we'll come back to this point in time, because I'd like to hear from you. But one of the things I want, I do want to hear from you is contrast what you've just been through the past 60 days or so with this business model compared to the other ones that you've done, how do you feel about it? What's your energy level? What's your confidence level? How, you know, contrast some of those things. And, you know, I want to hear about some of the successes or maybe some of the failures too, because we've all had those, those failures. I mean, my list is 
super long of the things I've tried that have failed. Uh, mm-hmm. and I, I love that I finally found something I can rely on. But you know, yeah. talk us through that from your vantage point. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I, I definitely have a entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I've been working and doing things, selling things probably since I could talk. I don't know, but, um, but you know, and as an adult, I, once we started having kids, I, I really wanted to be home. I worked at a spa and a salon. So, um, you know, I worked part time until I realized I just couldn't anymore once we had our third. And so, and I, wanted to be home. So I had, you know, an Etsy business and then, um, you know, selling handmade things, but that is so time consuming. So I, I was introduced to, um, a, you know, a direct sales, multi-level marketing company. Actually, I think I had kind of dabbled in a few, uh, previously I've done a total of seven. So it's, I, I added it up last night and I was like, wow. Um, the majority of my time I spent five years with one, um, I don't know if you want me to say names or anything, but I, probably I best if we don't. <laughs> it's probably not necessary. Um, so people who are, you know, anybody who watches this will know some of the things they did because you know you post on social media. But sure. um, anyway, so uh, I just I, it was appealing because I wanted to stay home. I could do it from home, um, and you know, and with each one, it you know, there's a lot of regrets that I have. Not really regrets, but mostly what I've come to is that everything, you know, I gained experience and not, not regrets. That wasn't the right word. Um, just looking back, like if I had been introduced to something like we're doing now, you know, there's, I feel like it was a lot of wasted time, but then I reframed my mindset of it's not wasted time because everything I did brought me to where we are today. And it's just part of of my experience. Jim Rohn, um, Jim Rohn says, you can focus on the loss or you can focus on the lesson. Ultimately, those were lessons learned and they're valuable lessons and relationships. I'm sure there's still some great friends yeah. you've made oh, through yeah. the business. But Definitely. there's something about having your own business. This is our business. This is our thing uh, versus being part of that structure and having to be a, a cheerleader for yes. something that's benefiting right. the people above you and below you and the, the whole network. Because I did three or four of those, you know? It's mm-hmm. been 20 years since I touched any of them. And I'm, I mean, I'm pitched these all the time. I mean, you can imagine a guy that's got a podcast with 120,000 downloads a, a month, listeners on iTunes and, oh, wow. oh, dude, you could get such a great <laughs> downline, right? I'm approached constantly. Okay. But when I look at it through the lens of what's the experience going to be ultimately for the majority of the people that I expose this to, just the whole industry doesn't have a great track record. Am I saying there's no good ones out there? No. Am I saying it's a bad idea? Not necessarily, but I would rather use my influence to help people launch their own thing. Yes. I'm all in on that. They own it. It's just them. Sink or swim based on your work and then put you in a community of other people doing the same thing. But there's no downline. There's no structure. There's no people above you, below you getting paid for the work that you're doing. It's mm-hmm. your business. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I can appreciate that. And I'm very familiar. And there's some some of the best training, sales training and business training is in those companies, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not a fan of the model. Just right. it is not. And it, I lost yeah. that about 20 years ago after kind of going through three. And most of them end up closing their doors suddenly and surprisingly. Yeah. Leaving the whole bottom half of the structure kind of wondering what just happened. <laughs> it happens too often. I know. Yeah. And on, on that note, I mean, all those points, like, you know, great training, great people. And I really, you know, um, it, I would always get to a point in my business that I couldn't ever get people to the point where I was. And I wasn't ever like the top of the company. And at one point I was the top 2%, but I wasn't making very much money. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, this is the top 2%. Like this is just, I mean, I don't know. So, um, but I couldn't help people, you know, even make $500 a month or a thousand. And it was like, and I, the more my organization grew, the more I was working, but the less I was making time-wise, you know? And so yeah. this stopped making sense and I got burnt out and then I joined another one. And then <laughs> thought, well, if I start a new one, it'll be different. And in the beginning, they have all these flashy bonuses. Like if you do this in the first three months, you get a $10,000 bonus or whatever. So, um, sure. so anyways, I, um, in 2021, uh, you know, we, we had heard about the podcast, we'd been listening and I was like, I was with a business, but I wasn't ready to let it go. Cause 
it was what I knew. And I, like you said, the onboarding and the learning curve of something new is a very, you know, a period of intense focused effort um, and energy. And so I just, I wasn't ready for that. And he was working and we weren't in need. Like we, we had dreams and goals that we wanted to get to, but it wasn't like we were desperate. And I got pregnant in 2021. And I was like, we need to get this going. You know, that would be so awesome to have you home by the time the baby gets here. And then I had decided to leave the company that I was with. I just, with homeschooling and a new baby coming, it was, it was time for me just to step back all together and just focus, you know, and I said, you know, when we get Amazon going, that's something that we can do together. And that was kind of our plan. And it got sped up, but our plan was to work it slowly, you know, and right have him retire, go part-time. And then, then it just was like, well, I guess we're just diving in. The October know? surprise, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the October surprise. <laughs> and, and, you know, and it just, uh, the timing of it, it, it didn't feel ideal at first, but it was really what we needed. Um, and having the extra time with him, you know, just, you know, he was working some jobs, you know, here and there, but having the extra time with him home, as a family and then to focus on the business because it was a very, you know, intense period in that first few months. I mean, we're still really focused on it, but yeah, it doesn't feel as overwhelming. Um, you know, like at times it definitely was, you know, felt overwhelming because it's new and we didn't know anything. We didn't know the lingo. There's all these words that, you know, we've listened to the podcast and now when I hear them, I just know it for a long time. I was like, what does that one mean? But I love how you go back and you always explain it. So that's really helpful for... Oh, thank you for saying that. Because I, I do get feedback sometimes from people like, Jim, do you really have to explain what yeah. FBA is all the time and what, you know, what yeah. KIPA is? And, you know, for listeners who've heard 250 episodes, it can it can get a little redundant. Yeah. But I always have in mind, you know, this I, mean, I think this is from coming from a, a, a pastor's house. You know, my dad was a pastor and and I would hear him you know, in, in being part of different churches, the, the saying is, if you haven't said it 40 times yet, you haven't said it. <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> if you think you can say it once and everyone's going to hear you, that's not how this thing works, man. This, the important things get repeated and you've got to be newbie friendly. You got to keep in mind, there's people who have never been around before. And so I try to always wear that hat of listening as if this was the first podcast episode anyone had ever heard and explain those acronyms, like you said, as, as frequently as I can. So, so thank you for, for giving me some, uh, some recognition on that, because it's, it's not easy to do to, to say these things literally hundreds of times in some cases. But if it's the first time someone hears it, that can be very meaningful. Yeah. And, and I'm glad it was for you as well. Yeah. And I would say, you know, going back to the, you know, past history of what we've done and to this, uh, I feel like it's, uh, well, I, I constantly felt like I was on a hamster wheel or that there was like this carrot being dangled in front of me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I explain it. And, you know, I would hit burnout because there was never just one period of intense focused effort. It was just a constant intense focus effort. If you wanted to get higher, go to the next rank, you know, uh, get the next, get to the next level and all that. So. Uh, with this is, you know, there is that short period and we're feeling that now that we're in a good groove, you know, we know what to do next, but we have, you know, our, our big goals and dreams for the future that I know will be in that period again of that intense, you know, focus effort. But I, yeah. Each I, I stage kind of like has that, but you know, the, the nice thing about the trajectory and the reason that we're so bullish on this business model in particular is because there's a new liberty that comes with each new stage. You're automating, you're stepping away from your business and, and you're, you're setting it in place and and then you're moving on and, and tacking on other income streams yeah. uh, instead of like you said the hamster wheel yeah that's that's to me it feels like a lot of people step away from a career because they feel like they're on a hamster wheel not going anywhere and they, they launch their own business and it feels like the same thing it's a wheel it's just mm -hmm. you know I, I remember a friend who was making these um, Etsy products very detailed and very time consuming. It took, you know, 20, 25 hours to get each one of these ready. And they were making some money, but they couldn't keep up with the orders. And they were just like, I, I it's a grind. I've mm -hmm. bought myself a job. I can't teach anyone else to do this. It's my craft. And, and this is as high as I'll ever go. But the thing about this business model is every single piece of it can be automated. You can put a good person in place. You can step to that next level. And it's a leadership journey. It's not going from one hamster wheel to another. It's a leadership journey is what you're really on at this point. And, and that's why we love this model so much is one of the reasons. 
uh, uh, each new level is just, it's another step in your leadership journey towards having a team. And maybe you do some consulting, maybe you do some coaching, your time gets freer as you're making more money is the beautiful part of it. Yeah, those are those are all the things that were really appealing. And we saw that immediately. You know, we could see that in our friends who introduced us. We've been kind of checking in with them and they would tell us how it's going. And um, you know, it, we've we've mentioned it to a few people locally here. His sister actually set up her account and sent him her first shipment in like a week, two weeks, I don't know. And then her third weekend and got her first sale. So it was like that's awesome. Yeah, she's one of those people that like go get yeah. it, make it happen it kind of thing. Right? The whole time we kept telling her, once you have time to look into this, you need to. And she just took it and ran with it. So and we have oh, another great. Here who's doing it as well. And so just um, you know, that loving be able to give somebody an option to, you know, have something, you know, teach, teach Amanda fish, if you will, but and, and the fact that there's no benefit to us. Right. That, yes. That's the biggest that, thing is that, is that we point. can give the opportunity to, you know, my sister or our friend that but it doesn't it was benefit eating us. something. We're not We're making not any money it. off of them doing yeah. anything. It's yeah. giving them the legitimate opportunity to change their family and to change the, you know, to change the trajectory of their life forever. That yes. And, you, and you're not you charging know. money. It's like, hey, get in my downline. It sounds so self-serving. And it, you know, you feel kind of almost awkward. Like I'm putting my friendships at risk here doing this. That's kind of how it felt. Like not on purpose, but they teach you that every single person you come into contact with, you know, you got to share your opportunity. And it felt very disingenuine. Yeah. I really struggled like I just, yeah, I just was, it was very freeing to be able to let that go. And now I don't have to share my business with people. And whereas before I felt like, how do I work in sharing what I do? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I love that story about your cat. Hey, let's talk about my network marketing business. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, yeah, that's kind I, of awkward. Like, where do you? I got to do that. I tried to make it, you know. Oh, sure. I, I, I remember navigating that. I remember but, myself uh, navigating that, that yeah. exact type of like. I got to be making new friends so I can tell them about the business. Does that make me disingenuous somehow? Does that make me uh, not a good a friend? Problem. If that's my intention, I mean, what are my intentions here? Questioning your own intentions constantly. I remember that. Yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah, one of the exhausting parts. Am I missing anything? Anything else? Mm-hmm. Obviously, but I really I love pretty much every aspect of this business except for learning new things. <laughs> <laughs> Once I learn it, I really enjoy it. So yeah. learning new things feels really hard sometimes. But you know, I love sourcing. I love shopping. Uh, find like I get really excited when I find something really good. I, we're doing a little bit of OA and RA. Um, I don't know. You want to take over now? Where we're at? I don't know where you want to sure. go from here. But no, just, I'm just, just enjoying. Keep I'm the story just going. Thing. I'm really enjoying every aspect of ours, we've been teaching our son and he's super interested or all of our kids have helped us with, you know, shipments, doing stickers and, you know, packaging and things. Oh, that's and so great. I just, I love that I can drop it. I can come back to it. I, you know, it's, it's our own thing and we get to make it what we want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think it's valuable to have that contrast and you guys, these are all fresh memories, you know, and, and if, if you can trust me, you know, if, years from now, it'll be a distant memory what this phase felt like. It's important to kind of document and remember and share. Uh, it, it, even if I would encourage journal, maybe even. Because the thing I've noticed about this business, again, having taught thousands of people, is these mountains, these new things you got to learn, the stuff you're uncomfortable with, this new lingo that everyone uses and all these acronyms and such. You're going to pick up on that stuff so fast. The mountains that you'll actually we'll be facing, you know, a year into this. And, you know, when you're doing $50,000 a month and the leadership challenges, you know, those are a different set of mountains. But mm-hmm. if you can look back and believe that every mountain becomes a molehill, if you've got the right team and you're equipped with the right support network and the, the leaders who have been there, done that, every mountain you encounter on this journey becomes a molehill eventually. And it's good to have that reminder so I'd encourage you guys to document some of this. I don't know how much journaling you do. I don't do as much as I need to. I, I do a fair amount. Uh, but. Well, I, I know that you, you've mentioned it a few times. And even the one I listened to of the firefighter guy, and you guys were talking yeah, about Ted that. recently. I mm-hmm. love that one. That one was, was really, I love all of them. Every day I'm like, did you listen to this? Sometimes we listen together, sometimes we don't. And I feel like every time I'm like, I love that one. I love that one. I love their story. So I don't know, but I, and that is something mentally I've been kind of made a note of is starting to journal, 
Um, so we haven't, but it's definitely something yeah, we just, will be. Just to encourage you guys. It's, and uh, it, it will, you will make more money more, more quickly if you journal. It's just, it's, it's a fact. It's one of the most powerful things you can do is just kind of document the journey and have your kids even make note of the family dynamic. And, you know, what do you guys think of now that dad's home? And I'm sure you guys have these kind of conversations, but just, you know, document that stage of the journey and how it's impacting them and how they're involved in the business. Because I look back now on those little things that we did involving the kids back when the only thing they could really do to contribute was to slap little frog stickers on each box or whatever. Like, okay, they would give an important job for you. All those boxes need frog stickers, you know? And like, how many frog stickers, daddy? And like, okay. And just, but that's that practice of like, they weren't really contributing any value, but they were getting used to the process of our family serves others by doing this work. Mm-hmm. And then they step into bigger roles and suddenly that kid who was, you know, this big just a few years ago is now helping run our warehouse. And mm-hmm. it's, he he's, loves it. You know, so there's little steps along the journey, just documenting them and enjoying them as a family. It sounds like you guys enjoy the journey quite a bit together. So kudos to you for that. Um, but my job is to coach you further, uh, you know, encourage you. I would say for some reason, I felt prompted just, man, you guys need to document this journey. It's going to benefit not only your family, but I think a lot of others as well. Because I very naturally, when I see someone at the start of a success journey, I know that the next phases will be new leadership roles on stage, creating content, presenting, sharing how this business has changed your family dynamic. You know, it improved our marriage, improved our relationships with our kids. We have new friends and, you know, documenting that and sharing that. We're not in network marketing anymore, but sharing the journey is every bit as much important Mm -hmm. because we are really fighting against the culture that pushes against a lot of these things and says it can't be done. They tell us as dads, Brett, you know, hey, you can't be a good provider and a good husband, and a good dad. You kind of got to pick one or two of those. You can't have all three. It's impossible. It'll never happen. And we're saying, no, we're, we're going to do all three. Uh, and I'm going to do it well. I'm going to be home. I'm going to be available. I'm going to build a great business. My kids are going to be part of it. I'm going to have a great relationship with my spouse. I'm going to make those things happen. Uh, our culture needs to hear from, from guys like us mm-hmm. that are doing it. And for families that are doing it like we are. So I love it. Well, let, let's keep the story going here. Um, you know, we've, we, we talked about your first month. You guys had a $3,000 month. Here we are in the month after that, right? So how's it going? How are you finding products? Maybe we can work on your systems a little bit. Like, you know, what are your processes here? Uh, let's let's just talk through it a little bit and see if maybe we even, you know, can coach you guys or tweak your systems a little bit as you're ramping up. How's it going? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, <clears throat> our, our first uh, kind of main sourcing is uh, the Advanced Keeper Training. That was an absolute mind-blowing game changer for us to be able to take all of that data and get all of the information. And then, you know, we're going through and, you know, we'd, we'd make these lists and try and narrow them down. And, well, maybe we should, you know, change the settings here and change the settings there. And so we've been playing around with that um, and doing the, the, you know, storefront stocking. Yeah. Um, we're also looking, if we find a brand that we like, um, something that we know that we can that we can get, then we'll we can, you can search by brand, and then you you know filter out all the you know all the criteria that you want and try and find something that's moving good for a good price. And um, so we've been doing a lot of that. And so you know we'll we'll I'll I'll pull a, a, a whole sheet full of ASINs to check, and we start going through it. When I get when I have time to sit down, I'll source through as much as I can, and then I'll highlight where I left off, and then. She can come in and pick up wherever I left off. And then our 13-year-old son, he'll come in when he's done with his homework. He comes in here and he loves to just sit down right, and even in between, he tries to sneak in. And yeah. And so <laughs> it's, you know, teaching him, well, it's teaching that all of our kids that we are doing something all together that is going to change our life. We talk all the time about when we get, you know, to the point of, you know, X, whatever, you know, when we're at a point where we can go on a road trip, we, you know, but we have to get our business there, bef- you know, to, to start, you know, doing more online. We did, we went through OA Simplified, um, which another mind blowing game changer. <laughs> um, and so we, re- we really want to get into tactical and um, that's our next goal right now is to, is to get into tactical arbitrage and learn it and get get to where we can use it 
effectively. And then, you know, at that point is I, where we think is where we'll probably start looking for a VA um, to start doing some of that for us. And um, yeah, and, you know, utilizing a prep center. And, you know, so we're teaching our kids all of these things about running a business and, you know, we're, we're grinding it out right now. We're, we're working hard and, you know, sometimes we're up late at night and sometimes we're running boxes out at, you know, we've got to get to the, to, you know, to go drop it off at Staples before they close at mm-hmm. nine o'clock. Cause we got to get this shipment out. And so we, um, yeah, so we're just, we're, we're pushing as, as hard as we can and, and trying to get going, um, as fast as we can, but also knowing that it's going to take some time and that we're yeah. not going as fast as other people. And sometimes we get caught up on somebody that, oh man, my second month I did 20,000 and you're going, what the, how in How'd the world, yeah. you know? And, but, you know, I think that, you know, we're super happy with where we're at, um, at, to start off. I mean, it, $3,000 in, in our first month is, I mean, it's, Unbelievable. Yeah. That was with yeah. two VA shipments sent in, one at the end of November, one in December, and then just the merchant fulfilled too. Yeah. So that was, and we were wanting to double in January, but I later realized I would have had to send, we would have had to send in more in December because of the time it takes for them to get it on the shelves. Right. So we did send in six shipments in January, right? Yeah, yeah six. And uh, some of them still haven't hit the shelves yet, but January, we did about 3,200. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, you guys are on a great trajectory. Hey, sorry for the interruption. We'll get back to the show in just a second, but I wanted to throw in a quick reminder about our fantastic sponsor, Payoneer. That's P-A-Y-O-N-E-E-R. Payoneer.com slash funding. Up to $750,000 without a credit check. If you're an Amazon or Walmart seller, great terms. Go check out what they have to offer our community. If you're trying to grow your business and the thing holding you back is capital, they're a great place to look to solve that problem fast. Very flexible repayment terms as well, which is super cool. Payoneer.com. Check them out, guys. Back to the show. And we were wanting to double in January, but I later realized I would have had to send, we would have had to send in more in December because of the time it takes for them to get it on the shelves. Right. So we did send in six shipments in January, right? Yeah, yeah six. And uh, some of them still haven't hit the shelves yet, but January, we did about 3,200. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, you guys are on a great trajectory. Yeah, so the, the, the switch on that was that we had, you know, and it's not that it was a, it was a false number or a false sense of success because it was incredible success, especially with the margins that we had on some mm-hmm. of those items. But what January we did a, a, a little bit higher, but still about 3000. Um, but it was almost all FBA. Mm-hmm. Right. So we didn't have to, we, sh- we touched it once we, yeah. we got it and shipped it in. And so that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and really seeing that this, this is working that it, it's happening and it's it, all the things are happening the way that they're supposed to happen and things get shipped out when they're supposed to go out and we didn't have to physically do it, which is, you know, it, it, the, the proof of concept and, um, yeah. you know, the reassurance, but now it's just worth, <laughs> okay, well now we're going to send in two shipments a week. Yeah. Our goal for January and, was one a week. Now it's two a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and you'll be at daily shipments before long. And like you said, using a prep center, using a virtual assistant to help you find more inventory. You you guys, I love that term proof of concept. So few businesses ever get to that point where they have that celebration of, yeah, all we have to do now is scale. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like this works. Add some commas and zeros. The system works exactly the same. You've got proof of concept. More money in equals more money out. More shipments equals more net profits at the end of the month. It's just a matter of how fast can we find more replens. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go back and just make sure we didn't leave anyone behind like I did for you guys when you were new around here. We talked about the advanced Keepa training, which I have some exciting news as we're recording this today. It launches tomorrow. So by the time this podcast episode comes out, there will be advanced Keepa, new advanced Keepa strategies. I'll send it to you guys 
just shoot me a quick text. We, we were corresponding by text today before we started and I'll get you guys in no cost, okay? For this um, advanced so- keep a training part two. Thank you. Okay. If you guys liked advanced keep a training part one, which is it sounds like you've used quite a bit to find what you've done so far. There's nine new strategies being added into that content. Provenamazoncourse.com slash Keepa is the shortcut link. By the time this episode goes live, people can visit there and go grab it. If you're a proven Amazon course student, you get a huge discount. My guest today, you guys get it free, obviously, like I said, but that's nine new strategies. So the one that you talked about earlier, the storefront stalking, the kind of combing through, looking for opportunity, we go step-by-step. Step. Brian Olson and Rob and his wife, they do a great job giving us nine new equally powerful, really cool strategies. You guys are going to love that. And you talked about the OA Simplified as well. I just want to make sure people realize that the course that's sold at OA Simplified, as in o- online arbitrage, simplified.com, it's part of the Proven Amazon course now. It's one of the modules included inside the collection of content. So don't go buying it, get the Proven Amazon course and you have it. As, along with all the other great training modules we have. Uh, when we launch a new module, sometimes we'll charge money for a short period of time for sometimes six to nine months or so. And then we'll add it in for free. But we always give our proven Amazon course students a great discount during that window of time as well if they, if they don't want to wait. So that gets us up to speed on those courses that you guys were talking about. Um, I'd love to hear what your exact... Um, criteria is for finding a good replan and and how you identify, you know, what are you looking for? Um, and maybe we can play around with that a little bit and just kind of give you guys some ideas to to maybe make life a little easier or expand on your opportunity. So so one of the two of you talk me through that if you don't mind. What are you looking for? I don't think it's changed since the beginning. Do you want to start where we you were go. and what we are? Yeah. Okay. So in the beginning I think we were looking for, you know, using Keepa and we have RevSeller for, you know, factoring the price and all the fees and stuff. Mm -hmm. So with Keepa, we were looking for 15 or more drops. And I don't even know how we were finding stuff in the beginning because before we did the advanced Keepa training, I think we would just pick a a local store and we would pick a brand. And I think we would just kind of rabbit trail that way. Or I would just Mm -hmm. look at an item and then just go off of that. But it was 15 drops and you know the we want we're looking ideally a 40% ROI or return on investment and 20% Based on the buy box history being your price yeah, and I, price. I would look sometimes off of the buy box where I would look at the you can see all the sellers and what they're selling at and I would pick mm-hmm. a price if it's you know seemed like it was fast moving if it was more you know 20 25 drops I would say okay it doesn't you know and it, you can see on Keepa the buy box history I love that I yes. just just that more recently, but I would just kind of, kind of gauge, like, do we have to go with that buy box price? Or is, you know, you say that they sell, you know, sometimes higher than the buy box. And it's very true. We've seen that over and over again. And so it wasn't always going off of the buy buy box. I would kind of play around with the price a little bit there. Um, And I see a lot of times new replin sellers get very obsessed with the buy box and sometimes they never break away from that. So it's good to hear you say that that's only one small factor in how you do this. Anytime I hear someone say something like, I've looked at hundreds of things and I can't find anything that will ever work. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you're buy box focused. You you don't understand how this works. Yeah. And we did, it was hard to find things in the beginning. And then we weren't ungated in grocery and it took five times sending in our documents, which that I posted in the group. What am I doing wrong? And we called our friend and, you know, we, then we figured out like, you have to highlight this circle that make sure Amazon really sees what you're sending in. And right. and we were able to pass that information on to his sister and she got ungated in grocery right away, which was oh, awesome. Yeah. Was yeah. with her. <laughs> um, Cause we didn't know the first time. And so, but once we were ungated in grocery, you know, and then, Really, the as we were sending things in, now you know things we get ungated in items really quickly, which you know that opens up more doors to options to you know be able to sell things. But oh, I, I love to hear you say um, that. So you're getting those little prompts that says, "Hey, you're, mm-hmm. you're actually ineligible to sell this. Would you like to mm-hmm. apply?" And you click the button, and, and boom, a, mm-hmm. it falls open, right? Yeah. Yep. My, it and it says because of your performance history, or isn't you that know, a so great thing to say? So, yeah, it's like oh, and we first. Review, oh, they like me. <laughs> feedback, which felt really great as well. So, yeah. Um, anyways, but yeah. So as far as 
Um, what we look for, I, you know, we want to be making like four or five dollars. It would be kind of what we look for. If it's something that we can find easily and it's selling, I don't, I don't know that we really go lower than three dollars. I don't think we really have one. Yeah, profit. Yeah. Yeah, three dollars profit. Sorry. Yeah. So we look for that five dollar range because that way it gives us wiggle room, you know. Uh, and recently, though, after watching Always Simplified hearing Leah Modlin talk about what she looks for, which we looked at seller count, but we didn't really look at it. I don't know. Just, I think what we did, we were looking for was that drop of like, okay, the brand might be kicking people off of this. Yeah. So away from those, like we knew that was a, a red flag, but her saying, when you see the seller count kind of doing this, that, or like, what did she say? It's like a party's going on. She was like, if it looks yeah. like there's a coffee here. And so I, I kind of have that in my mind. Like, this looks like a flat, like me, this is boring. Nothing's happening here. Don't maybe not go with that one. But if there's a lot of action with the seller count, that's something that you want to take into consideration as well. So yeah, that's another thing that we look at. Because, um, th because oftentimes that tells us if it's bouncing between, say, 15 and 35 sellers, and it's just like, mm -hmm. like you know, they're selling you, out. There's a lot of people selling out constantly of that item that it, it's moving maybe even faster than the keep a chart itself is telling you yeah so uh -huh. it looks like a party i love that leah has some great line one-liners yeah. it looks yeah. like a party on the seller count that can be a very positive indicator for uh, an asin that you can jump on and it, well above buy box uh -huh. and at some point because of a, a geographical advantage that your inventory has it's going to be sitting right where someone needs it to be sitting in a zip code near them and they're going to snag it at a great uh -huh net margin for you good ones like that this week that were five ten dollars over the buy box and yeah it's great <laughs> that's beautiful it's so fun to make that happen isn't it yeah, yeah. And, and that's the game you you find these asins and a lot of people think the game is finding asins that no other sellers have found yet so i can go in at the historical buy box price and take advantage of that until some other sellers find it and then i'm gone Mm -hmm. You can certainly play the game that way, but that opens up opens you up to, I would say, maybe 5% of the total great replens that are out there. And that's just a real struggle. If that's your only strategy is I've got to find ASINs that there's no other sellers or just a few other sellers, and I can make great money at the historical buy box price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some opportunity there, but not much. The real opportunity is kind of stuff we're talking about where... You know, the, the ASINs I get the most excited about now are the ones where they're really, there's a lot of sellers on it and, yeah. and it's really selling fast. And we can go in, pick our price in the middle of the pack and just wait. I'm not going to go in 50 or hundred units deep, but I'll go three, five units and sit there and see them pop out once every few days at a great margin. There's a lot to be said for that, that approach to this business. Uh, it says like, sounds like you guys have had a little success as well early on with with kind of going in. So those ones that are selling for well above buy box, do you happen to know offhand how many drops per month you were seeing on Keepa for those? Probably offhand? I would imagine last they were faster month. movers. Well, lately, so the last month, I think we set our, when we do our Keepa, um, what is it called? Oh, our, the filters, we've been doing 50 drops or more. Yeah. Is what we're looking for instead of that 15, 20. Um, well, I think that was that was a bit of a mindset shift in, well, there's too many people on this. We don't want to, you know, we're going to be competing with yeah. everybody mm. and their cousin. And we just, you know, let's find something with very few sellers that's dropping, you know, 15 or 20 drops a month is good. And we can, you know, like you say, you can, you know, multiply that a couple times probably. And so we, that's kind of, we were trying to be really conservative. And then we, the things that have been selling they're, you know, we're on listings with, you know, 40, 50, 60 other sellers. Right. And, and everybody is winning. And it's, yeah. it, it, you know, I love that. And mm -hmm. that it's, you know, that we've had, uh, we've had a few tankers and those aren't fun. Um, but, but again, the beauty of the model, the, um, we're, we're only into it, you know, five units of a, a six pack of this, this yeah. item. Yeah, that was it, it. We saw it, and it was a killer ASIN, and buy box was great, and it, everything looked just perfect. And so we went out and we bought, you know, bought a, a, you know thirty of these things because you know five, sent six. in five six packs, 
And then it hit, must have hit a list. I don't know. But we're sitting on, you know, so then everybody just started taking the price and um, I have not sold one. And it was one of the first things we sent in. So yeah. And how many drops per month was that one? Oh, it, was, it, was, it was like 60, yeah, 60 drops bad. at least. Yeah. Which is crazy that we haven't sold any, but, but I well, kept lowering the price the, after a month, lowering, lowering a little, lowering. Now we just match the the featured yeah. offer and we're we just, just want to get out of it. We're now. trying to get out of it because we're, you know, that's money that we can spend on something that's mm-hmm. going to make us money. Yeah. Just and, get your money back. And maybe you lost a couple bucks per. Yeah. Per, we'll lose a few dollars on each one, but yeah, that was the, uh, the coaches called, um, that they were talking about that, that, um, just this week that if, you know, if it's a, sometimes you have to take, take a loss to get something, but, um, yep. But you have money to spend on something that is going to make you profit. And it happens. And it's nice that your worst case scenario is, you know, you drop the price down and you break even or you lose maybe a couple dollars, but you certainly don't lose your full investment because no. people are buying this stuff. Yeah. Yep. And we don't have a garage full of this stuff. So yeah, we've pretty much stuck to the rule of three to five, um, except for one that we were doing FBM. We've got like 20 sitting over there. Yeah. But and, I think it'll come back. It kind of, I think it'll come back. I don't know. They We're always do. So, yeah, good ASINs become great them. again. They always become great again. And unless they, for some reason, get expired or, you know, shut off the product, um, you know, gets turned off at Amazon for some reason. But good ASINs become good ASINs again. Because a lot of times what'll happen, the, you know, you, 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 we talk about price tanking and I, I'm not a fan of that phrase. I think it paints a, uh, an inaccurately negative image of seller behavior. But if you get a bunch of uninformed sellers kind of all chasing a product down into the basement, they're not going to stay there. They're going to burn through their inventory, learn their painful lesson, come back wiser a couple months later. They're certainly not going to go buy a thousand more units and lose money on them. So unless they have a unique advantage where they can source for less money, that group of people are going to, they're going to wise up. And that ASIN will be attractive again. Customers, I would almost argue that these price tanking scenarios are good for those of us who recognize the opportunity in it. Because what's happening is the price drops, customers flock to Amazon, that ASIN gets even more popular, but now it's no longer available at that same low price that it was when all these people on the buy list all chased each other down to you know losing money. They've all moved on. Mm-hmm. But here's this ASIN still sitting here as a reasonable opportunity for people who know how to actually make a profit. Mm-hmm. So price tankers, put them on your calendar, check back with them 60 days later. Quite mm-hmm. often, they're big winners, again, that you can go after. Nice and slow, you know. But the lesson you learn painfully is you don't want to go too deep on any of these. Yeah. Right. Right. So you've got about a month's worth at the most. And when you're testing, you don't have a month's worth. When you're testing, you just have a couple units yeah. and see how it goes. And if it, for some reason it doesn't work, you drop your price, get your money back, go find some other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long? So uh, I know you said after 30 days, I've heard you say that you will start you know, playing with the price, but yeah. how long would you say you hold on to stuff I mean, is it 60? Well, I'd like to see it move within 60 days. Okay. 60. You start getting into paying long-term storage fees and things after that. You know, uh, I can't remember where it is exactly. I should know off the top of my head. But I think by the time you get to 90 days, you're playing with some long-term storage fees. Yeah. items. So at 30 days, we start saying, okay, let's figure this out. At 60 days, it's time to just turn that back into money. Whatever we got to do, recall mm-hmm. it or put some other plans in place. Um, okay. Get rid of it. Yeah. So I don't even turn a repricer on. The fast movers, you don't need a repricer. You just put it at a price you like. Mm-hmm. And wait a month. And when I say wait a month, it's not a month from the time you guys put it in a box and shipped it to Amazon, as we discussed. You know, if you learned this lesson early on, it takes right. a couple of weeks sometimes for the product to even get to Amazon. And other times, what you'll notice too is Amazon will make it available to sale to the customer and put it real far out there date, you know, like two weeks from now, it's like, Hey, here it's, so here it is showing up on the, the list of available products for the customer, but it's got a date, like two weeks out there, FBA date. And it's, it's prime. What's that? Well, they know it's on the way and they've said, Hey, it's going to take us a week to receive it and a week to get it to the warehouse. So two weeks from now, we can have it for you, Mr. Customer. 
that's that doesn't count in the one month. The month starts once it's at Amazon. It's available for two-day delivery prime. It's it's on the shelf. That's mm-hmm. when the clock starts ticking on the month, right? I didn't know that. I was always wondering how they calculate the fees. Like, is it once they you know re- say it's received, but not on the shelf? So that answers that question. No, it's once it's it actually has to be received and on uh, on the shelf. If it's an FBA yeah. item, it'll show up as prime available mm-hmm. with a you know, very short shipping window. If it's yeah. showing prime available for two weeks from now, they're not billing you for storage space yet. Okay. Yeah, the month the month countdown hasn't started. So you don't want to start your own internal month, month countdown either on that. Uh, yeah, and since you guys are willing to do some merchant fulfill too, there's all kinds of opportunity there. The stuff with short expiration dates and such, oh, mm-hmm. just so much opportunity there. Yeah, we're open to doing that. We don't mind. We always check, you know, is it better merchant? Is it better FBA? But our end goal is, you know, to have it be more automated, you know, once we learn the rules, get it more, you know, hands off and, you know, like you say, only doing the things that only we can do. That's right. Wow, that's great. Very few people (laughs) say that back the exact way, the right way. There's many ways you can mess that phrase up. You said it perfectly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've listened to a lot of of podcasts. I feel like I've I'm an expert at some things, not very many, but well, getting... I'm still I'm still learning too. And one of the things I've learned is new students teach me something consistently. I learn, so I I, I love for any observations you guys have or the questions you have or like what well, I can't find an answer to this. You know, let us know, teach us from as you kind of wander through what it is that we've established here. We love getting your feedback and those questions as they come in. That you know, the new people teach us so much around here and help us shape out our messaging and our content and bring us brilliant ideas quite often. So yeah, keep exploring, keep having fun. You're not going to break anything. Just as you've learned now, keep trying new things. You did mention Rev Seller earlier. I I didn't clarify what that is for people who want to check it out. It's proven amazoncourse.com slash Rev Seller, R-E-V-S-E-L-L-E-R. It puts the numbers right on your screen. It's a Chrome extension. Tells you how profitable any given item is when you're sitting there looking at Amazon. Kind of like the same way Keepa works as the Chrome extension sits right on Amazon.com. You can see all the information you need to make good decisions. And we've got a good video too, just to do a quick mini commercial. It's free in our Facebook group, silentgym.com slash intro video, I-N-T-R-O-V-I-D-E-O, intro video, one word. That takes you right into our Facebook group and into a video where I show you how to use Keepa and rev seller from a very basic standpoint on how to find great replens. So that's a good starting point. If you're listening today and you're a little overwhelmed by some of the stuff we've gotten into, but these guys have only been doing it a couple months and they've really learned a lot. They've put a couple thousand dollars in the bank. They've learned some hard lessons, got a great trajectory to their business. I'm loving this guys. What else do you want to talk about? Any questions for me or any, anything, the rest of your story? Now, I haven't heard about your kids yet. Now you said you have four kids. Is your oldest is your 13 year old? Did I pick up on that? We have five and yeah, 13, 10, eight, six, and 10 months. 10 months. Okay. So, four when the story started, we added the baby in for a total of five. Yeah. And that's what we've got too. We've got the four boys and the little girl, and ours are older than yours. Mine are getting married now, like I was mentioning to you guys earlier. Three, well, two and a half married, one about to be married, and, and two still at home. Uh, but yeah, just enjoy the journey. That's awesome. How, what's the impact been on the family dynamic, having this under the roof? And you mentioned the kids kind of helping out and integrating it into homeschool. And I love, let me just, before you answer that question, uh, I love the fact that there's a lot of homeschool families in this community, and this is part of their homeschool content curriculum experience. I think it's beautiful. The dividends pay off, you know, having your kids exposed to, to business. What's your approach to that? How are you kind of thinking through that? Um, I mean, it's, it, the dynamic has been great and they, you know, we, we talk with them a lot. A, a lot about what we're doing and, you know, how we're doing it and why we're doing it. Um, and so they, they're, uh, they're going to be, you know, Amazon experts <laughs> by the time they graduate high school. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's showing them that we, we have big dreams and this is one way to do it. And that this isn't the only way, but this is the way that we're doing it right now. Um, but incorporating them into the things that we're doing, helping, you know, they'll, our, you know, six-year-old, is, she puts stickers over barcodes when we're doing bundles. Um, 
you know, they have to you know, cover up the, the, the UPC. And so she gets to sticker them all and, oh, did I do it? Is it straight enough? And yeah, it's perfect. Um, you know, and they got, we got shipping supplies all over the house and, uh, we'll come home with, uh, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll go do a, we do a lot of grocery pickup from our, our Walmart here in town, That's which is really nice. Um, and she'll come home with, you know, bags of cookies and candies and all these kind of things. And the kids are always wanting to know if it's for us or for the business. Yeah. Is this for other people or for our family? Yeah. We did that a lot here too. And so, you know, they get to see it and they're seeing us doing something and we're doing it together. And, um, and you know, it, it's not, it hasn't been the easiest thing on, you know, it's all overall, it's been amazing. Um, but we've had those moments and, um, there was just a couple of weeks ago, we were, we were putting together a shipment and, you know, all the kids are in and we're bagging stuff up, putting stuff into poly bags and, you know, doing all the, all the stuff. We've got like four boxes that we're loading up and I was trying to package up these big, you know, these bottles of shampoo. A bottle. And yeah. so, and I didn't know, you know, how to package it right, but I'm thinking, well, I don't want this thing to bust open. So I bubble wrapped it and did, you know, it was just, I don't know if it was overkill for sure. Um, but it was, it was I was, we were, oh my yeah. gosh, they were like double the size. Yeah. <laughs> they, they would not break. Um, but anyway, you know, it's, it's funny now and we can laugh, but at the time it was really stressful and mm-hmm. we were, we were, it was late at night and, you know, we were, we were, we don't really do bedtimes. It's not, <laughs> we're, we're very free range in that regard. Same so. here. Yeah, I, I tell people we we're on the east. We live on the east coast time zone, and I tell people we live on Pacific time. Okay, so yeah. mm-hmm. yep. we sleep in, and yep. we're the only house in the neighborhood with lights on, say midnight, yep. one a.m. You know, <laughs> so we're on the west coast, and we're at what like Hawaii time? You're Hawaii time, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, it was it was late at night, and and you know we're trying to put this shipment together, and we're still not really good at it yet. And so we're trying to, you know, it was, and it was stressful. And I said, and, I think that was the night I said, when is this not going to feel so hard? <laughs> when yeah. is this going to feel like we can handle it? Like and not every step be, yeah. you know, and challenging. Now, now the shipments are coming a lot easier, but that night she said something that was really, that stuck with me. Cause we were, I mean, really, honestly, we were, you know, not in the great moods at each other, <laughs> uh, having a little bit of a disagreement on, you know, just, it was just late and the tensions were high. Um, and she said, I was putting those shampoos together and she said, the little things matter. Mm. And it just kind of made me stop and say, you know, that what we're doing, it matters. And the kids are here and they're doing it with us. And they, and so yeah, a side note to that, when, you know, our kids saw us in a disagreement, not heated or anything, but, um, then they see us resolve it and oh, so healthy and to talk. And so then we talk to them about it and say, you know, yeah, we're human and we're all sinners and <laughs> we're all going to mess up. But then we come together and they see us, you know, work it out. And so we're very open in that regard. And so they're seeing a lot of the, the stressors of starting a business and things. It's not always sunshine and rainbows that um, they get to see the real life. And, and some of that is, you know, the nitty gritty stuff that you got to grind through, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's the little things matter and and packaging up shampoo bottles at 10 o'clock at night that matters. And, you know, so I, because you know, you want the customer to get it and, you know, it not be broken and be happy. And I always just think of what will the customer think when they receive this? Like, it's better to go a little above and beyond and take that extra time. Absolutely. I'd rather have them be happy than be mad and complain or return it or, you know. So, so many, yeah, so, so many fun. great lessons in there for the kids and doing this as a family. And you even mentioned, you know, mm-hmm. something that jumped out of my head. Um, Andrew and I did some some parenting classes that when we were, when our kids were small, and it was biblical principles for parenting based on Hebrew tradition and that sort of thing. And And the concept of delayed gratification was a big one. And so I remember very early on, you know, you talked about the question of bringing home candy and cookies or toys or whatever. And the kids are like, are these for other people's families or are these for our family? You know, and they talk them through, but just 
that's such a healthy thing for a kid. Uh, and I remember the way they illustrated it was you'd give, I think it was a marshmallow and you could say, okay, here's, here's a marshmallow and you can eat it right now if you want to. Mm -hmm. Or 15 minutes from now, you can have two marshmallows. It's your choice. And just really gets their brain spinning. But, but having a business like this does the same thing where like, no, this isn't for our family. Our family is going to enjoy the trip we're going to take once this gets to a certain step. Mm-hmm. You know? So this is us building towards that. Del- the, and that's what business is. It's delayed gratification. It's those of us who are willing to set aside what we want right now, instead of using a credit card to go get it and go into debt, we're not going to do that. We're going to serve others well and eventually have put our own resources and time and money at risk and eventually have those things. That's what business is. It's those of us who have learned the concept of delayed gratification. So you've built it into your your whole family. The dividends you guys are going to see, I'm so excited. I wish I could like give you guys a glimpse of what these kids look like 10, 15, 20 years from now, because I know, because I, this is what we did. And the, the, obs- the way they see the world now, um, the way they see marriage and relationships and business and the virtue of business and the virtue of entrepreneurship, that's just huge dividends. So well done, guys. If there's anything at all that I can do or that our team can do to help you guys on this journey, I hope you know we're here. And the other thing that came to mind as you were talking about that shampoo thing was, and this is for you guys, and this is for anyone else as well. What If we could go back in time to that moment, I would love to have captured that moment of frustration with a this little picture and just shown like, okay, did I overdo it here? And like, we're actually arguing right now because I don't know how many go in the box, guys. Help us out. If you post that in the Facebook group, I promise you, you're going to get like 80 responses. Hey, we've been there, done that. Hey guys, try this instead, or here's what you should do. And here's the kind of box you need. And suddenly it's, it's a lesson for the community. You guys feel a little bit better. You can laugh at yourselves and that's okay. We need to be able to do that. So I just want to encourage you guys, those little frustrating steps, that's what the group's for. 72,000 people. I mean, it could be two in the morning and there's people on the other side of the planet doing this business and it's the middle of the day for them. Hop in and you know, off you go having a great discussion in real time. That's the beauty of the free Facebook group. So just want to encourage you guys, as you hit those next you know, mountains, those molehills that feel like mountains, you know, share them with the group. That's why we're here. Well, we definitely, I use the group a lot. I read through, I love, you know, and I'll search for things sometimes. And I have posted a few times. Um, I've kind of refrained. I feel like I could easily be on there all the time <laughs> asking questions. And, but I find that I can find answers to my questions a lot of the time, but I will definitely. And I, I just want to say, we really appreciate, uh, we feel like you've already done so much as far as just the podcast and all the content. Um, the course is amazing. We haven't even gone through like 90% of it or maybe 95%. I don't know. We've just done... Yeah. It, Brett was mentioned earlier. He wanted to go through the whole course. And I kind of thought internally, like I've heard that before. I don't know if anyone's ever accomplished it. <laughs> yeah, he's an analysis paralysis. And I'm like, why haven't we done this yesterday? So we really like, we balance each other out because I'm just like a... I mean, I've bought so much inventory that I've had to return because I just like overlook something really like... Because he'll sit there and stare at it forever. And I'm just like, click, 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 done. I'm going to get it, you know, so. You need both. You yes. really do. It sounds like a great match. God knows what he's doing when he puts us with our spouse, doesn't he? It's like, hey, <laughs> yes. you're a little yep. too worked up in this area. Let's give you someone who can balance that out. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. We meet in the middle eventually, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so, what else is yeah. on your mind, guys? We covered a lot of good territory. Is there anything else that you'd like to ask me? Any other topics of discussion? Uh, we can continue the conversation once we end the recording if you want, but I always like to capture as much of that as possible for the for the listener's sake as well. But uh, anything else on your mind? Yeah, I think, I mean, just if, as far as questions, where we're at right now um, and being at, you know, the very beginning stages of this journey, a lot of our questions are, you know, little things that the, honestly, the Facebook group has been so valuable. Um, mm-hmm just to find answers to the little annoying questions that, you know, seem meaningless, but um, somebody has answered them several times in, in the group. And if they haven't, we, we send it, you know, she'll post in there and um, it, it's been awesome. So the little questions, I don't know that we really have any little questions. Um, I, the one thing that if I could ask you, um, we, you know, we're doing, 
you know, 3000 a month. Um, we're on, you know, uh, on track to do a little bit more this month. Um, and then, you know, a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. But what are some things, you know, um, maybe it's a shift in a process or a mindset or something to, to get us to where, you know, we're, we want to be at, you know, 30 to 50,000 a month in sales. What, what are the things that we need to start shifting now to, yeah. to get us in that, in the right mindset for that? Right. Yeah. You know, the, the journey, this is general business advice and I'll give you something very specific. As you said that, here's the things that came to mind for me. Um, the, the general advice is, and it, as, as uh, you guys already mentioned, Leah already mentioned this just a moment ago, only do the things that only you can do. And that advice applies once you can afford to do that. At the beginning, you're wearing all the hats and you're thinking, if we're just going to wear all the hats and this thing's just going to get bigger, it's just going to feel heavier and a lot of wheels spinning. But if, as you find those processes that you're thinking to yourself, okay, I bet I could find someone to do this for 10 or $12 an hour. We've got the margin, you offload it. Now your time is free suddenly. So it, it, scaling isn't about you working harder and spinning the plates and staying up later and losing, you know, losing sleep and working Sundays. And that, that's not what it feels like to get bigger. It feels like you're outsourcing, you're offloading, you're creating systems around the things that are repetitive. So the advice I'm giving you is anything that feels repetitive or borderline tedious, you, start, you can start to push those things off into someone else's responsibility. One of the kids do it, you hire someone to do it, that sort of thing. The first hire you're going to make, however, on that journey is going to be a virtual assistant to find more ASINs. That's the fuel of all of this. Finding more profitable ASINs, that's the fuel. If you turn that off, this thing kind of levels out and then slowly starts to fade. As long as you're finding more new ASINs constantly, it's going to keep right on rising. So that's the first thing you're going to do. And then you start looking for those with that extra margin, that extra profit. You know, you're going to have your first $10,000 a month before long. We just put a couple thousand, maybe 2,500 in the bank. Okay, let's use some of that money to start paying someone $4 an hour to find ASINs for us constantly based on the systems. Yeah. We, so, so your time is getting freed up as you scale. And the other thing that I wanted to, to share with you guys, I'm, this is a, a freebie for you guys for coming on the podcast today. I don't know, are you a member of the, the paid Facebook group for free no. no. Okay, I want to get you guys in there because yeah. there's standard operating procedures that we've identified that take you from you know, where you are now to the five thousand okay. dollar a month to the ten thousand. Then going from ten to thirty, it, you're, it's a different experience. The thirty to fifty range feels very different than the six figure. And actually, your daily task list of the things that you have to do every day is the smallest as your numbers get bigger. When you're doing it the right way, yeah. So I'm excited to have you guys kind of see what that journey looks like, and that's an in depth answer. But specifically, right now. What do you guys need to be doing? The advice is, no matter what you're doing, keep sending in shipments and keep finding new ASINs. Everything else is secondary distractions to those. Yeah. You know, because like you guys observed, okay, we, get, let's, we had a great December. Let's have a great January. Oh, wait, December was Christmas and busy and we only sent in a few shipments. That's why January is kind of, you know, about the same as December. You send in couple shipments a week that turns into three or four shipments a week, you're going to see a better month, two or three months from now as a result of that. So, you know, daily regular shipments as a goal at some point, you know, that's what we do, daily shipments uh, with our business, not Sundays and not most Saturdays, but four or five days a week, we're sending in a, a significant shipment. The vast majority of the time we are. You can't do it just once every two weeks and, and get to that level. So frequent smaller shipments even is fine. Yeah. And finding new ASINs constantly. Don't let that slip. And that's what will fuel your ability to move into. And, it, it, and the good news is, it, if we talked about the hamster wheel earlier. You don't have to run any harder than you are right now to get to those next levels. 10,000 a month is no more work than 2,000 a month. And yeah. 30,000 a month is no more work for you guys, personal routine schedule mm -hmm. than is where you are right now. Awesome. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's going to feel, it's, it's, and that, that's part of the beauty of this is we started seeing more and more, you know, the first 
50 success stories. And then we've got a few hundred people doing this and we're making observations about the group. And it's that this business gets slightly easier the more successful you get. And even bigger picture than that, the thing that's most exciting, especially when I see couples like you guys, that you have a great relationship with each other, with your kids. You're not afraid of a leadership role, potentially. You're not afraid to talk to other people about it. You've already shared it with someone else. The multiple doors that are going to open for you guys as a result of, you know, it could be a coaching role. It could be you guys consult other businesses. You could help brands get established on Amazon, launch, get into, you know, print on demand, become local experts in e-commerce, that sort of thing. Just the doors that start opening for you. And this is just one of multiple income streams now based on your skill set. Um, it, which reminds me of a point I wanted to make to you guys earlier, this skill set your kids are developing of being comfortable with e-commerce and knowing how business on the internet works. They're not teaching it the right way in schools. This is the way it actually works. We're the ones actually running profitable businesses. To have your kids part of that, man, that's an invaluable skill set. No matter where God takes them, they will have that in their pocket. They can launch comfortably and confidently launch a business selling in-demand products at a profit. That's a skill set that no one can take from them. So right. many benefits down the road as you guys continue this journey. I'm, I'm just, I'm super excited for you. I almost wish we could like somehow get a snapshot of what this looks like for you guys a year from now. It's going to be great. But I'm just, I'm so eager to, to be, to get to see that and for you guys to, to, to see that as well. I know it's going to be a beautiful picture. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Pause really quick. I have to go pick up the babies at a sitter's house. So I have to sneak out if you guys want to keep chatting. Of course. Well, you guys were more than generous with your time. Busy homeschool family. I know. Leah, it was great hanging out with you. Thank you. Good to meet you. Really appreciate your time and look forward to talking to you and maybe meeting you eventually at the conference. Yeah, (laughs) that'd be great. Yeah. Do you guys have plans yet uh, to attend maybe, Brett, in July? Um, Well, we're planning on attending. Yeah. but we don't know where it is yet. So yeah, well, once we stop recording, I'll tell you because by the time this episode launches, it's going to be public information anyway. So I'll fill you in on that here shortly. And I want to get you guys there no cost either. I'm going to pick up the tab on that, man. Get you guys complimentary access as again, as a guest. I love taking care of our guests. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, my pleasure, man. You guys still got to make the trip. We will be there. We're, Beautiful. we're, uh, we're definitely, it's, it's a high priority for us to get there and um, yeah, just to, it's the community of people and just everybody, you know, it's the, 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 the rising tide raises all ships kind of a mentality that um, we're really seeing that in this uh, from all the other businesses and all the other things that we've seen. This is truly one of the only things that, that we've come across so far that is like that. And everybody, you know, the, it's not the, nobody's competing with each other it's that there there's enough for everybody to go around and you know like on those fast moving asins with 50 sellers on them everybody wins and that's right so, and it's meeting you know meeting other other people in the community and that are doing the same thing and you know we we want to spread you know spread the word to people that we know that that could be blessed by this also where they can build their own empire you know it's yeah um, and some people when they hear us talk like that they they think that um well this is going to get saturated or it's probably saturated nothing can be that good for that many people you've got to keep the perspective and i think it's it's hard to grasp just how big this really is retail in the in the united states 85 percent of all retail is still done traditional brick and mortar style people getting in the car going to the stores that's 85 percent only 15 to 16 percent is online and only about half of that is on amazon but amazon is exploding the growth is exploding the future looks extremely extremely bright for e-commerce and for amazon as far as people shopping online and their warehouse network all across the country I would argue that the opportunity is in its infancy at best. It's going to look very different maybe five or 10 years from now. But those of us who have that skill set of finding products that have low actual or perceived value in one location and moving it online to a place of higher actual or perceived value, that skill set that we're developing here, that's never going to go out of style. I've seen it work for 20 years. 
it still feels like it's in its infancy and the numbers back us up. So yeah, share away is the point I'm making. Share it with other people. Tell them, hey, yeah, get in, listen to the podcast, check this out. Whether they buy a course from us or not, I think everybody could and should be having a business on the side, selling physical products. It's just such an expansive opportunity online. So that's that's what we're so bullish about it. And I think that's what you're getting a little flavor of is that excitement. And uh, yeah, we don't see each other as competitors. You're absolutely right. There's There's plenty of opportunity here. Yeah. Well, unless you had anything else on your mind, Brett, uh, I think this has been a great episode. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I'm really excited that you're going to join us July 6th through 8th at theprovenconference.com is the website. Looking forward to meeting your family. Bring the whole crew because kids are, they're they're free. Kids come on in free. If they can sit quietly in a session, they're welcome. If they're too young for that, then we'd say, hey, make some other arrangements. But uh, yeah, 16 and up needs a ticket, but your whole crew no problem. Bring them as long as you guys can juggle kids. What a lot of young families do is they bring someone along that can kind of be the the kid watcher <laughs> if, yeah. if, uh, if that works out. But yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys this summer. All yeah. right, man. Well, I'm going to talk to the listeners for just a second then uh, before I wrap this one up. Thanks for hanging out with the Lucas family and I today, a beautiful family. If you want to come hang out with all of us in July, the Proven Conference is your opportunity to do that. If you want to hang out with 72,000 people, no charge whatsoever, 72,000 people from around the world who live and breathe e-commerce. They're doing Amazon businesses. They're supporting each other. That's what our Facebook Facebook group is all about. Silentgym.com has a link to that. And that's where you go to get started as well with the Proven Amazon course if you're interested in jumping into that and, and learning the training that the Lucases have used to, to have their success so far. But on behalf of the whole team and my great guest today, Leah, who had to go catch the babysitter, but man, you did a great job for us today, Brett. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. We'll do another great episode for all you guys soon. God bless all the business building warriors. We'll be back very soon. Hey, before we end this episode, real quick, I want to thank our sponsor, Payoneer. Payoneer.com slash funding. Go there. They've got a great offer. Tell them Jim sent you. They'll give you 10% off the fees on your first funding. Remember, if you need more money to grow your business, these are some great guys to talk to. They've become a sponsor of our show. We're very grateful. And if you jump over and check out what they have to offer, I think you're going to like what you see. Very flexible payment terms, great interest rates. Go check out payoneer.com slash funding. Hey, we'll see you next episode. 